The rockyou2021.text media coverage, a big disgrace. So, Mike, what is rockyou2021.text? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, this is something that's you know gotten some some press, and you know here in the last couple of days, um, and it is um, noteworthy in some respects. But you know, really, it's nothing to be terribly alarmed about. Uh, so, the Rocky list um, uh, originally uh, came, if I recall correctly, out of a, a breach sometime in the 2009 timeframe, and was you know result uh, uh, basically a list of breached passwords. Um, and that list has grown and been added to with other breaches and, you know, dictionary words and stuff over time. Um, and so it really isn't currently what it once was. Mm-hmm. Um, in this 2021 kind of iteration, uh, it is approximately an uncompressed 92 gigabytes of just words. Just plain Some text. Of them, <laughs> just, just, just for it. It is a, it is a 92 gigabyte text file of words that are up to 20 ASCII characters in length. That is it. Most of them, um, as a matter of fact, uh, something like, you know, um, one, like, 14th of the content thereabouts is actually formally disclosed passwords. And these were passwords that were obtained through any number of data breaches that have happened over the last, you know, 10, 11, 12 years, right? I mean, these are not new breaches. There's nothing new here. Nobody new got hacked that had new passwords dumped into it or anything like that. So this is all stuff that was already available, already freely available, and has been freely available um, for, for, for a number of years, right? Um, so there's nothing interesting along, uh, along those lines. You know, beyond that, it's, you know, dictionary scrapes, Wikipedia-based word lists, um, probable world word lists and things along those lines. Um, that's, you know, again, things that have been called from many, many different sources uh, that have been available to, to attackers, you know, for, for a long time. Um, there's a couple of various um, sources in there, like the com- combination of many breaches list which had about 3.8 billion records in of its own, um, as well as, you know, a number of other sources there. All in total, about 8.4 billion records uh, in this text file after cleaning it out after deduplication. So it's basically a really giant list of words in a single file. So, so wait, this file itself, first off, is just the passwords. It's not a username and password pair. It's just the passwords. Right. It, so it's not. It is just potentially words that may or may not have been used as passwords, if ever, with no associated usernames. Great. And it is, it is huge, but it's also not deduplicated. Am I, am I hearing that right? No, it is deduplicated. Okay. Yeah, so they, they did go through and perform deduplication, which certainly has value from a, from, a, from a perspective. But, you know, for instance, as an attacker, what you want to do is find a list of known username password combinations, so failing that known used passwords. And then you can, you know, permeate or, or permutate through those, right? So you can, you know, do the leet speak substitution with things add, you know, exclamation marks in the front and the back or, you know, whatever you want to do to, you know, kind of permutate on that theme um, for likely passwords. This actually takes, you know, that subset of, of data, which would have kind of more value from an attacker's perspective, and just pops it in with all the other words that they have managed to find. So it, it is less valuable in some respects as a result of that, because sure, you can take this giant list and you can, you know, hash those values and then do hash lookups against passwords that you obtain through some other mechanism. So there is some value to this kind of an Uber list. Um, but really, it's, it, it's not what some media outlets are, are, are making it out to be. Okay. It's, it's fascinating from a, a password cracking perspective, because this is something that I, I am interested in, in learning more about. Um, 
the the mindset of password cracking, the me the methods by which you can take a, a simple word list and then iterate through it, doing like you said, you know, changing characters, making common changes, appending things, removing things, to try and build out a word list for a dictionary based attack. Um, but when you do that, you don't typically write a multi gigabyte password file to disk. Like you're you're generating your word list from your base list and immediately using it and then throwing it away because you don't need the list anymore. Um, and it just seems incredibly wasteful to have 92 gigabytes of text that might contain the password. I feel like there's got to be a better way to do this. So I, I, it just seems a little bit silly to me. Do you, do you get the same impression? Well, you know, at uh, 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 that kind of data volume, you're looking at offline type attacks, right? So like, sure. you know, you get, you get a hash file and you've got, you know, a giant database of hashed word values and you just run simple, you know, compares, right? You're just matching strings at that point. And then you can go, oh, okay, then A equals B. So there I am and I'm, I'm good to go. Um, so yeah, but if you were going to actually target a specific account or a specific organization, you wouldn't be using a 92 gigabit password file, gigabyte password file to, to do that. Uh, you know, because it's going to be super noisy. You know, they're going to block your IP address very, very quickly. The, anyone who's looking for any kind of failed login attempts is just it's going to light up your, you know, detective controls like a Christmas tree. You're going to try um, the first 10 lines of your 92 gigabyte file and then you're done. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get locked out at that point and blacklisted. Exactly. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, these are, are it, 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 it's, I look at stories like this as an opportunity to have a conversation about password security, authentication and identity management, and best practices around that, right? Um, you know, making sure that you're not using dictionary words or simple permutations thereof as a password, making sure that you're not using the same password across multiple services, regardless of what your user ID is making sure that you have app-based multi-factor authentication in use wherever possible, right? Failing that SMS-based, right? Um, you know, good, better, best types of approaches. Using a password manager so that you can create long, complex passwords that, you know, you're not going to remember off the top of your head. But that you have a password manager app that you're able to use is going to significantly decrease your risks of having your account compromised, fraud perpetrated against your account, which may have, you know, consequences, you know, financially, if for no other reason than you might have, you know, disputes with your credit card company or your bank, or if you were using a debit card, which by the way, you should never do, do not use a debit card <laughs> online, make sure you're using a credit card, it's safer. Um, you know, so these, these are things that, you know, even setting the enterprise aside as individuals, it's individuals that, that oftentimes makes these mistakes, right? The, the password that they're using at, you know, their favorite dot-com shopping site, they have a security breach, they're, or they get phished, their, their password gets compromised. But, you know, through social media, they know that that individual works for an organization like AT&T. First thing the attacker is going to do is say like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to try this password against their AT&T account and see if I get lucky, right? They're, they're going to try that against all the different services. And so making sure that you're, you know, as an individual taking responsibility, following best practices, because it is going to help protect not only yourself, but also the organization that you work for and save you a lot of headaches.